I'm wetting the sky area there with my large flat soft brush. Yeah. I mixed up a puddle of cerulean and some cerulean and a touch of pink. I'm using my size 10 brush, painting in more of a diagonal line here, um, starting at the top and sort of really sort of brushing right to the bottom sort of left hand side of the horizon area there, trying to leave lots of sort of light as you can see in the photograph as well. And what I'm doing now is I'm using my pipette and just adding lots of water to this left hand side because I want to keep the light of the clouds. So I've added a creamier mix of cerulean here painting damp into wet so the paint isn't as wet now using my size 10 brush. Now a little bit more of that pink with the cerulean uh, to make a sort of a blue violet colour and I'm just painting this on the top of the sky there. If you look at the photograph there's a little bit more violet in the cloud colour there just using the cerulean on its own here. Now I just want to paint this middle bit of the sky as you've got in the photograph. I love this sky by the way in the photograph, it really has inspired me. Um, I'm using my pipette now just to get things going, just to see what happens. It really does create lots of atmospheric effects. You can just leave it though wet in wet sky, but if you're like me, I like to sort of play around a little bit and just see what happens. Okay. So I've mixed up some cerulean there with a tiny, tiny touch of pink and I'm applying this paint with my size 10 brush wet on dry. What I love about cerulean as you can see there it's granulating and it, it really does look quite beautiful. And so I'm just sort of painting the left hand side of the water here, added a little bit more pink in there as you can see and now I've mixed up some burnt sienna there as well with a smidge of ultramarine. I'm using the tip of my brush now, now and just sort of paling the, the colour as it goes towards the top of the road. So I'm mixing up a little bit more of the cerulean now with a tiny little bit of the burnt sienna. So this is wet on dry and I'm still using my size 10 brush here, adding a little bit more cerulean now to that wash just at the top there, blending it in. So you've got that sort of bluish colour at the top of the water there as it goes towards the land in the middle distance. I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna here. Um, and I'm just going to sort of paint the edge of the road there. I was looking at the photograph and you have got sort of a warmish colour there just on the edge. So I'm just using the size 10 brush, not too overloaded with paint and just sort of painting this wet on dry. And I'm just using a clean brush now and just softening that burnt sienna. So it's time to allow the painting to dry again. But I'm wetting the mountain area here on the right hand side. So I'm going to use my trusty plastic card cut up here, dipping it into some burnt sienna and a little bit of ultramarine. And I do believe there's a little bit of pink there as well. And I'm using it now onto the wet surface there. Remember the masking fluid and the wax, as you can see, are resisting the paint and the masking fluid is protecting the white and light of the paper. This is one of my favourite techniques. It just works so well, especially on rough paper. Do make sure you wet this area first though and just gently, you don't even have to scrape, just gently glide your card and you can sort of vary the amount of paint on there. So some of it can be quite watery, others quite thick and creamy. Um, adding a little bit more ultramarine there, of course there is a little bit of tiny bit of pink in there as well, but you can be quite creative with those colours. If you want to make it dark, you can add a little bit of the paint grey as well and this now is very creamy paint here um, a lot of a lot of burnt sienna touch of ultramarine and I'm really sort of painting in or printing in this dark here it's not going to be exactly like the photograph especially when you're using a card it's quite tricky to do that but it gragginess that impression um, of the sort of cragginess of those rocks on that mountain there. So I'm going to work now on these distant mountains. So I'm wetting them as well with my size 10 brush. There is mostly masking fluid on these. I think I put a little bit of wax at the bottom and I'm just using a little bit of Payne's Grey now with a touch of ultramarine. I wanted something much cooler so it recedes. So the ones on the right, the mounds on the right are nearer and they're warmer in colours darker in tonal veins but I'm just painting or printing some dark there on the sort of water's edge using a mixture of the ultramarine with a touch of the Payne's Grey doing the same on the right hand side. I'm rinsing off my brush now make sure it's nice and clean taking off the excess water I'm just sort of softening and diluting 
um, this colour here as I sort of draw it up to the top of the mountain. Remember there's lots of masking fluid on here as well. Oh, I'm just going to paint now a few little dark marks, damp into damp on these right hand mountain here just where you can see some darks in the sort of vegetation and marks in the mountain so I'm using a little bit of Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna to create and paint these soft shadows and using the tip of my brush so I'm just painting some Payne's Grey here with a bit of Burnt Sienna what I'm doing now is I'm using my large flat soft brush and just wetting the road area and I'm using some Payne's Grey and I'm adding a little bit more burnt sienna there that's actually see how that just like exploded a little bit there so um i think the burnt sienna i had too much on my brush so i'm just softening that with a damp brush and adding a little bit more of the burnt sienna a touch of blue and a little touch of pink there as well so it's quite a nice color it's quite nice to practice these different colors this is ultramarine with a touch of burnt sienna into the foreground there a little bit sort of darker colour there working wet in wet bringing that right down to the edge of the paper there and that darker colour will cut will bring that painting forward I'm just using some creamy ultramarine with a touch of burnt sienna just, just around the edges of the road there in the foreground area and I'm going to allow the painting to dry so I can remove the masking fluid so, so I'm mixing up some Payne's grey here with a little bit of ultramarine blue I'm using my size 4 brush here and I'm just going to paint some some markings now on the wet on dry onto these distant mountains here remember in watercolor painting less really is more so I'm just tidying up this edge here I think I put a little bit too much masking fluid on so I'm just softening that edge there with a little bit of the ultramarine and the Payne's grey wet on dry with my size 4 brush and just making these kind of almost abstract marks um, you can see the rocks coming through the snow here and there so I'm just applying a few little marks here to these very distant mountains there again still with my size 4 brush you can dilute that wash if you feel it's too dark as well painting on the right hand side now the peak here lovely bit of dark there still using this size 4 brush with a mixture you could use ultramarine and burnt sienna if you like as well I'm using a touch of the Payne's grey so you've got this really lovely dark colour still working wet on dry and also deepening and darkening some of the shadow colours previous, that I previously painted in the stage before and just sort of shaping things and making sense of things as well it's quite therapeutic painting all these marks I'm just painting a few more marks or trees in the foreground still using ultramarine and burnt sienna I'm also using a little bit of dry brush here so not much paint on my brush and using it quite quickly and you get a nice textured effect there just at the bottom of the mountain using still using the Payne's grey and ultramarine and whatever other color I've got on the palette there but quickly and swiftly brushing over that textured rough paper there to get some nice sort of marks there especially at the bottom there using the belly of my brush tip of the brush there it just creates some lovely lovely textures so I'm mixing up a little bit of the cerulean here touch of pink bit too much pink there I'm going to add a touch more ultramarine but it's a little bit more of a blue violet color and I'm painting this wash with my size 10 brush over the bottom part of the mouth in here just to create a little bit more dark as what you can see in the photograph as well so I'm going to allow the painting to dry again once the painting is dry I'm going to paint some of these shadow colors on the distant mountains not too much mixing up a lot more of a dilute color here so this is a lot paler this shadow color I'm using my size 6 brush painting wet on dry remember to keep lots of white as well so just a little bit of glazing here with shadow with a mixture of the cerulean with a tiny touch of pink or you could use the ultramarine with a tiny touch of pink very dilute painting some of these shadows on the distant mountains I'm just painting the posts now with my size 6 brush there's a little bit of burnt sienna just to give them a touch of warmth and now I'm painting the edge of the road wet on dry with my size 10 brush with a mix of ultramarine and burnt sienna and just sort of you know having all these sort of diagonal marks look like they're going to meet at the top of that road there so it's a little bit of one point perspective here and I'm just softening as well these marks 
this as you can see I'm just washing off my brush using clean water and just softening back those marks there so they don't sort of come forward I'm keeping the darker marks in the foreground and really leaving the middle ground and the distance untouched there so it really gives the painting some depth and I'm just painting a few more marks here damp into damp into the foreground and I'm going to allow my painting to dry again so the painting is dry and I'm painting the post wet on dry with my size 4 brush with a mix of ultramarine and burnt sienna and I'm just keeping everything really simple here I don't want to sort of bring too much attention to them but it just adds a little bit of detail and some depth to the painting as the post gets smaller as they go off into the distance I'm also going to paint just a little bit of shadow so the lights coming from the right so there's a little bit of shadow just behind the post there on the left hand side I'm not going to make too much of this especially with the posts in the distance it's just to give a little bit of detail here and some depth with the shadows there as you can see I've just lifted off a little bit with my paper towel because it was a bit too dark and it was bringing those little posts forward there so I'm just working on the right hand side as well now with my size 4 brush just painting in with a mixture of the ultramarine and the burnt sienna there keeping everything really simple I've even got a little bit of light coming from the right hand side of the post there and just softening the ones in the distance I'm also going to paint some shadows here very soft there but just to kind of really sort of emphasize the light is coming from the right hand side I'm going to allow my painting to dry once again and I'm going to finish off my painting using some white gouache you could use white acrylic ink or you could use white watercolour actually as you can see I'm using the bottom of the tube of paint and I'm printing some of the white here wet on dry and it does create some lovely texture because the paper is lovely and rough as well now you may not have to do this because your masking fluid would have worked really well and you've kept all your light areas and the snow but if you have lost some of those it's quite a nice technique to do to apply this white paint printing with it with either a plastic card or the bottom of a tube of paint and just have some fun with it now now you can use your brush if you find it easier than the card or the end of the tube of paint um, I'm using my size 6 brush now painting wet on dry and just painting some of the um, cliffs there it's a little bit of snow on the edge I'm just adding a little bit of white to the um, white road markings there as well I think I lost a little bit earlier and also to the left hand side now my paintings wouldn't be complete without a spatter so I've spattered the bottom of the mountains there using a little bit of dark paint and I'm also spattering the foreground here in the road with some white with my size 4 brush just to give a little bit of light and texture again also spattered a little bit of a darker brown colour that's the ultramarine with the burnt sienna to finish off and here is the finished painting I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below patreon.com forward slash Karen Rice Art. You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.